Charlotte Collins and welcome to The Sherlock Show. It is the last show of 2021, so it is definitely worth tuning in. It is a real goodie. First up, we're joined by wine expert Amelia Singer, who has selected the best wines and champagnes that our great British supermarkets have to offer. Her and Georgie are here with an enviable taste test. Later, Lou, Polly and I are doing a deep dive into our festive wardrobes. From party picks to Christmas Day inspo, we are here with everything we're wearing over the coming weeks. Adiola is also here. She's showing us how to perfect a really glam makeup look in time for the last few evenings of the party season. And then social pantry head chef Sarah Turner is back with her bid to turn even the most ardent Brussels sprouts haters into lovers. Finally, Laura Black is sharing her top gifts for all the family. But first, it's panel chat with Lou and Polly. Hey. Hi, guys. Hi. Merry Christmas, nearly. Merry, Merry Christmas. So excited. Are we feeling festive? I actually am feeling yeah. quite festive now. I feel like... The tree is up, the songs are kind of on the radio all the time mm. now. And yeah, fully really merry. I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning with a, oh, so many gifts left to buy. It's yeah. 10 days. It's 10 so, days? Yes, today's the 14th. 11 oh, days. Okay, that just yeah. makes me nervous. It's come around so quick, hasn't it? I had the same realisation. Like, I've got so much time, I'm fine. And then I was like, shit, I've actually not got much time at all. Um, yeah, went for a quick Christmas shop at the weekend. Did you? Yeah, in person, which I never Oof. do, but I was just like, blitz it, get yeah. it done, and I actually yeah. feel much more zen now. Okay, I need to do that. Yeah. Um, so, it is our last show of the series of the year, so we thought that we would do, since it's the three of us, a little bit of a fashion retrospective on the year. Um, so we're going to start with our favourite fashion moment, and despite all the lockdowns, there actually were quite a few to choose from. Polly, I'm going to come to you first. What was your favourite fashion moment of 2021? So mine was Billie Eilish's Vogue cover, because... That really sticks in my mind as one where I saw it and I thought, wow, that is, like, that took my breath away because it was just so unexpected from her. Like, you know, historically she's been quite baggy clothes. I'm not about getting my skin out. But I just loved how it felt kind of sexy and it got her skin out, but it still felt like her, mm. um, which I think it's, it could have been really difficult to do and it felt really empowering and yeah I just loved it I thought she looked incredible it was a, it was controversial at the time wasn't it because obviously she had layers of fans and like young girls who it was amazing mm. that she didn't make a kind yeah. of a thing of her body yeah. but then at the same time I think her response to that was you know I'm growing up and I'm evolving and this yeah. is just what happens yeah. and like that was that was cool wasn't it yeah I also love the story behind it as well like she had like a wig like covering it for ages oh yeah and there were like some super fans who were like we know that's not Billy's real hair oh you mean yeah. the ice block when she went yeah. like props so yeah, no, yeah. yeah, when she then transformed into what she looks like mm. now. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because I think the Vogue cover was kind of her big reveal. Yeah, yeah of that, it of that was. Look. Uh, Luke, what was your favourite fashion moment of the year? So I found it really hard to work out what happened in this year, <laughs> what was like two years ago. I don't know. I feel like the last <laughs> two years are a real big blur. Mm. Um, but the first thing that came to my mind was Lorraine Pascal's wedding pictures. Um, in particular, the one of her and Ella Belinska, her daughter, mm. walking her down the aisle. Ella's wearing a blue suit and trainers and Lorraine is wearing a Vivian Westwood dress. And they both just look incredible. Um, it was a real like lockdown wedding and it just brought me so much joy and yeah that's that picture just really sticks in my mind for both Lorraine and Ella. This yeah. has been the year of by the way you can do something different for your wedding yeah. hasn't yeah. it or you know I guess the last 18 months and that was a real case in point of just like doing something completely different and it just mm. like really rocking it. Yeah, yeah so cool. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay well mine obviously it had to be Hayley Bieber in some capacity. <laughs> I just pulled up her Instagram and I was like what did I love this year? <laughs> um, but her Jimmy Choo campaign was Absolutely sensational. I'm mm. not sure it's necessarily a fashion moment so much as they're like, my God, I want to look like that girl. Yeah. Um, but the styling, the shoes, she's just like, she just makes you want to buy whatever she's wearing, yeah. doesn't she? Such and those boots, quality. those white boots, like the so good. Gucci's, and then the big bowed heels with the pink. Oh, yeah. Heaven, heaven. Mm -hmm. um, okay, topic two, trend of the year. What has been your favourite trend. Oh, Lou, you go first. So mine is um, the sort of collegiate athleisure look, um, which was inspired from the Celine runway looks. We kind of briefly touched on this when we did our trend report earlier in the season. Um, but I love, I, I really loved seeing that look kind of come about. It's kind of, you know, there's a lot of caps, trainers have kind of made a real, real comeback, mm. um, but worn in a smart way with, you know, a long overcoat and then it's with a hoodie, but it's with a really nice smart bag. And, it, you know, there's a lot of influences, you know, Faker Strom, Alex Riviere, mm. who really encapsulate that look and they still look polished mm. and, and glam and on trend, but it's not, it doesn't feel too like 
contrived mm. or like it's going to date that much. So I really like it. Yeah, it's yeah. not a pleasure in a lockdown way, right? It's no, no, exactly. Like a and, kind of up smart, way. and I think it's kind of like the evolution of our lockdown yeah. wardrobe into something that's kind of relaxing and mm. cool and, and yeah. still smart and kind of work appropriate for whatever you're doing. Yeah. So those of us who aren't yeah, prepared sure. to part with our hoodies. Exactly. Yeah, not yeah. quite. Uh, Polly, <laughs> but yours is slightly different. Your favorite Yeah, movie, I yeah? mean, at the other end of the spectrum, mine is naked dresses, <laughs> which I think has kind of been, there's been hints of it, but I feel like the first time I really felt like it was a thing was after the Met Gala because Zoe Kravitz wearing that kind of almost chainmail type dress. Got about the Met Gala this year. Yeah, of course. I know we yeah. have mentioned the Met Gala, but you know, Kendall was sort of wearing one. Camille Charrier's really kind of championed that. There's been a few like popping up on Instagram, and obviously it's like the most unpractical trend going. But I don't know. I think after last year and the focus on loungewear and you know not dressing up it's really nice to see something so kind of daring and out there and I flip and love it I just want someone to invite me to something where yeah. it might be appropriate and then I'll get into shape and <laughs> wear one. Do me a favor. I feel like you really need one because I feel like you've been talking about this for a while yeah. so no. maybe just to shut up you should buy a naked dress <laughs> maybe I should I saw Nina Sandbeck wearing one at the weekend like a little Instagram reel that she'd done and it was I stalked the brand and it was like quite expensive but I was like that is a really good one it was That's kind of like dark black and like and, oh, and there's good. the green one that Camille Sherry yes, wore to yes. the Fashion Awards as yes, well, which yes. is just like excellent. Yeah. And her wedding dress as well. Oh my god, yeah. And we have to talk about her wedding dress. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, she really went for the naked You're trend, right. didn't she? She did, she did. It's not for everyone. It's not. No, so I it's... actually preferred her first dress. That was quite yeah. naked too. But not quite, naked, not quite naked. as much. I lo love the sleeves. I love the like little mm. touch. It was like a real like winter wedding. Yeah, yeah. yeah like you know, it felt like it was really hard, but it's still yeah. quite like, Yeah, it was like a really good winter wedding. Yeah, I actually agree yeah, with that. Um, well, mine is more in your camp. Mine is furry shoes, which <laughs> obviously. Um, do you know what? I talk about them a lot. I actually don't even have a pair. I really what? feel like. Why well, don't you? have sandals though, haven't you? Yeah. Your LM ones. I do, but they're furry on the outside. They're not furry on the oh, inside. Okay. So they are technically just sandals with some fur. So I really could do with like a yeah. really, you know, I'm talking about like the Hermes. I'm talking about yeah. the Prada, yeah. Balenciaga, Marnie. I mean, everybody has done. Yeah. That like curly shearling head. Yeah. When we went to matches, it was like a haven of heaven. <laughs> yeah, and there's um, I think it's coming on screen now, but there's a there is a um, Birkenstock pair as well. That oh, not yeah. just the fluffy Birkenstocks, but they're like shearling Birkenstocks. I feel yeah. like you need again like no, my, my naked dressing. I think you just need to get some I because you've been talking about it for a long time. Yeah, I really have. I never really. Match that time when you emergency emailed me saying, Lou, Lou, emergency, <laughs> we need to talk about Oh my God, what has happened, what has happened? Charlotte wanted to buy the shoes. I did, and I bought them, and then I checked it out, and I sent them back. Oh. That was that was lockdown one, you know, like, what? this, this I've been on a it. long journey with these fluffy shoes. I should just you buy them. The Anyone wants to send me the shearling Birkenstocks, that would, that would be great. <laughs> um, okay, finally, style icon for the year. Who is your crowning fashion winner of the year? Polly, I'll come to you first, because you've sort of, Spoken about well, we've kind of spoken about them both already, but for me, it's it's Hayley Bieber or Camille Sherrier. I think in terms of like the people that I consistently save, it's like on Instagram, it's those two. Mm. They just nail it every time. They're the kind of blend of like relaxed, but a little bit dressed up, but sexy, but casual, but like just exactly how I want to dress. And I actually just bought a pair of Nike dunk high tops because I want to look like Hayley. <laughs> so... Fingers crossed for me, guys. <laughs> That'll do it. That will, <laughs> that will absolutely do it. To be fair, everything I buy is because I want to look like yeah. Hayley. Yeah. So, like, I'm with you. To be fair, that, that picture of her and Justin oh in my God, London so cool. in that oversized Ugh. coat. They're here right now. Yeah, the oversized coat. Why are we here? I'm we should go and try and find them. I'm trying to work out what time they would have been in Covent Garden at that time. Because like it was empty and it was light, so it can't have been that early. I feel like it must have been like eight, yeah. you think, on the dot. She was quite dark at eight this morning. Yeah, exactly. You know, we'll take this conversation off the show, yeah. but like, let's <laughs> no, try no, and no. find them later today. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I agree that Coach, she does masculine tailoring yeah, so, so well, good. doesn't she? So good. Amazing. And yeah. Camille as well. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, so good. good. Yeah. Lou? Um, so I wouldn't say this is like my icon, but the, probably the person who I've been influenced the most by this year. Um, again, I was going through my saves and I was like, ooh, there's a lot of the new <laughs> Um, who is a um, influencer who just has such, it, it is quite like, classic is maybe not the right word. I'm struggling now to describe it. classic myself. with a twist, isn't yeah. she, yeah. I'd say. Like, yeah. th there's never like a real out there piece mm. or a trend. And I think it's probably the way that she styles classic yeah. pieces. So, you know, whether it's just a simple white shirt, mm. the way that she puts together her outfits, I find it is really inspiring. And mm. yeah, it's, you know, even if it's just a jumper and jeans, I feel like she was the first person to do the big uh, gray, gray um, 
Oh, I can't see anything. <laughs> sweater over, over a trench coat, sweater, yeah. Yeah, which yeah. was then everywhere yeah. Hodge is wearing at the moment. Um, <laughs> and yeah, there's just a few kind of really simple but looks where I feel yeah. like have actually really impacted a lot of people. When yeah. she comes up on my news feed or my Instagram feed, like it's, she might have uploaded the photo 10 seconds ago or like 20 minutes, yeah. whatever it is. I but we like, liked it. Liked it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, we get it. You love her. Yeah. But she's got... She's got amazing stuff. Yeah, like, really amazing. Impeccable. Um, okay, mine is Zendaya. Like she, mm. I feel this. I mean, even last night there were photos this morning of her at the Spider Man premiere, and she was wearing this. I mean, a, quite a naked dress actually. You really yeah. like it, but then also <laughs> with like a Spider Man kind of eye mask, like a kind of yeah. masquerade ball yeah. type mask. I mean, she looked incredible. There have been so many unreal red yeah. carpet looks yeah. from her this, so right. this year. That red slip skirt with the oh, big yeah. red off the shoulder. I mean, I yeah. just think she is. She is. A flawless individual and yeah. they get yeah. her red carpet looks so right. so right yeah you're so yeah. right I actually hadn't considered that but like everyone has like been statement enough yeah yeah but like getting it right yeah yeah she's so likable as well yeah. did you see Graham Norton last week like really nice yeah. like I want to be her friend so. yeah she's mine um all right that's it we'll be back in a minute anyway so we're not going very far <laughs> um, but I love that thank you both very much uh next up Amelia Singer joins Georgie for our annual supermarket wine and champagne tasting. If you haven't got your festive booze sorted out yet, then this one is for you. I am always thrilled to welcome wine <laughs> TV presenter, wine journalist, all round wine guru, Amelia Singer. Oh, well, Means one thing when you're in the building. Lots of wine. Lots of wine <laughs> in the last show before Christmas. It's become a bit of a tradition you come it in. It is. Well, I had to come back from LA just just for this, Georgie. Oh, well, we're, we're honoured. <laughs> uh, people always say I, I get really excited when Amelia's on. Um, I do, because I feel like you know my palate now. So, you know, no pressure. These are all going to be excellent, I hope. Well, I do, but you know how, you know me also. I like to get you sometimes a little bit off piece. Yeah. So there's definitely some which I, I'm like, Georgie will love this. And there's others where I'm like, let's just try and get Georgie outside of her comfort zone. Uh, I love being proved wrong by someone that knows more <laughs> than me. Um, I have to say that you, Amelia came on a few years ago and recommended uh, Cremant de Jura from Cremant de Jura yes. from Aldi, and I still get people sending me, tagging me in their Instagram messages, saying, Yay! knocking back the Cremant de Jura from Aldi. Well, it was such a good tip. It was like seven pounds or something. Well, this is another Cremant. It is. But the Cremant just means that it's it's been made exactly the same way as Champagne, but it's not from Champagne, so they can't call it Champagne. This is Cremant de Bourgogne, so Cremant from Burgundy. Ten pounds, so it's it's, it's a, a variation on theme, but yeah, this is a, a combination of Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and I think there's also a little bit of Pinot Meunier in there. So what you'd expect from Champagne. Mm, delicious. Delicious. And what I like about it is you get like lots of like red crunchy apple fruit mm. there. Mm. It's really fruity, and there's a little bit of acacia honey on the finish. It's really nice. So it's, it's great not on too its own. dry. No. And so it's, like, it's great on its own. So you know sometimes if you have champagne and you're not eating or whatever, it can be quite acidic. Whereas I really love how rounded out and creamy. That is and yeah. really, really good. I, I'm, I, there we are. Tick. <laughs> Great. I'm, I'm going to put it there. I'm on the back row, and at the end, I'm okay. going to come back to Brilliant. that. Brilliant. Yeah, okay, good, good. We've got our glass etiquette sorted. We have. Okay, next. <laughs> this is Waitrose. So, yes, this is, I know you love your Chardonnay. I do. So, this is a Blanc de Blanc uh, champagne. So, when it says Blanc de Blanc, that means it's 100% made of the Chardonnay grapes. So, this is, now we are in traditional champagne. Oh, that smells good. And Waitrose just, they're just really foolproof on their champagne selection. Oh, that's delish. Yeah. That is, that is Christmas Day, smoked salmon blini. Yes, please. Exactly. Because, like, yeah, this has got more of a kind of like the lemon peel, the golden crunchy apple. Mm. It's refreshing. But again, it's not too dry either. Thank you. Okay. Now what? this, this I'm excited about. So this, I must admit, was the biggest surprise to me coming back from America. It is an English wine, an English sparkling wine. So again, made in exact same way as champagne. But it's a vintage uh, English sparkling wine, so an, an older vintage, so it's from 2010. And the thing is, we're not like champagne here. We don't have all the resources and all the old vintages. Like We just haven't been making sparkling wine for that long. So often what we tend to make, we sell straight away and it gets drunk straight away. But Morrison's have somehow managed to make an amazing sparkling wine from 2010 grapes. And actually, when this was made, it was actually cellared in the winery for eight years before it was released. Now, why is that important? Well, just the thing is, when you drink English wine, it's delicious, but it tends to be quite like, you know, you get lots of the acidity and you get the immediate fresh fruitiness. When it's had a little bit of age to it, that's when hopefully the golden fruit will still be there. But then you can also get 
some lovely kind of savory nuances too, which make it even more special with food. 25 Age. quid, I'm expecting good things. Oh, it's very good. See, there is a kind of like earthiness and umami element. So again, I was thinking that you have on its own, that you have with like, let's make some canopy, but can you imagine this because it is kind of a little bit earthy, a little bit kind of, um, yeah, savory It's definitely almost. more, it's more grown up, isn't it? It's it, more savory, but can you imagine pairing that with kind of Christmas day when you have all your different like root vegetables and your stuffings and your kind of turkey. It tastes more complex and... Yeah, it, like, and it's not just the fruit, like it's, it's got the fruit, but then there's a kind of like earthy, yes, savory yes, yes. element there, which... Very good. Three out of three, Amelia. They are good and something for every budget. Okay, we're on to whites yes. now. We've so got what three I, whites. Yeah, so I, I wanted to start That's with That's like, making me nervous, but anyway, we'll come on to it. I knew you wouldn't like the fact, I know, I know. And that's the one which I meant was going to be the off-piste one. Okay. If you do have a Christmas party coming up, a drinks party, basically a big gathering of people, this bottle is such fun. So I love Grunewald Lina. It's kind of spiritual home. It comes from Austria. Generally, you don't need it to be oak. So again, if you're wanting to serve a white wine, also has a corkscrew, easy access. Yeah. I love Gruner because it combines brightness with ripeness of fruit and it's just easy drinking and it's also a very versatile wine like what you tend to get mm. with textbook gruner is kind of green apples it actually has a lovely peachy aroma to it because it's from southern austria where they get a little bit more sunshine mm, and this i just love that's really nice that was really good that's it's really kind of good. yeah zippy but still fruity and like really juicy not too sweet, not too sweet. got bright acidity it's really nice. And it's 7 dollars Yes, this is from the Wine wow. Society. I love the Wine Society. They're like the oh oldest God, my father wine in -law loves the Wine Society. They are amazing. So that's from them. And actually, the next one is from them it's too. It's also from them. Yeah, I was going to do a Chablis. And then I was like, you know what? No. No. I'm actually going to show you. <laughs> it's a New Zealand Chardonnay. I desisted. Um, okay, but this but is a New world Chardonnay which from New Zealand because I think often when people think of New Zealand whites they think of New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc but this um, um this is an amazing family so Kumi um the Kumi family make amazing Chardonnay from the Northern Ireland uh in New Zealand and they spent time in Burgundy so they're much more inspired by Burgundian traditions I would say as opposed to New World what does that mean it's not going to be a big buttockist popcorn but they do use a little bit of oak so you get like a little bit of vanilla on the nose, but it's it, it's not like you're wading through caramel. But then you still get like a little bit of cindered toffee on the finish. Mm -hmm. Like a little bit, see? That's and nice. it is rounded out, see? So I kind of feel like, if you feel like you have to appease the Chablis fans, or you have to appease people who like more acidic, and don't go for the buttery stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is quite if good. If you're trying to convert someone to Chardonnay, he's a yes. savior drinker. Exactly, and you want to serve it. Chardonnay at your dinner table. And you want to prove to them that Chardonnay exactly. is a really good wine. Then, then that is a good way to go. And it's yeah. £15.50, which again, it's such great value because it comes from this top winemaking family, top grapes. But because it's a New Zealand Chardonnay and no one thinks of Chardonnay from New Zealand, it's great value. Having said that, that's half the price. I'd take that every day of the week. Have faith. You have faith. I do. I'm a bit upset by the bottle, but anyway, I let's knew crack you on. would be upset by the <laughs> bottle. Okay, because. Unfortunately, white Rioja is never a trendy, cool, or edgy choice. Now, why I chose this is because it's kind of got the Werther's original buttery thing you want because it's been okay, aged in oak and, and Rioja is known for their aging in oak. But because it's not made from Chardonnay, it's made from the Viura grape mainly, it has a classic kind of Rioja freshness, which actually, when you're having your goose or your turkey and you're having the cranberry sauce and whatever, you want a roundedness, but also something quite bright too. You don't want something which is going to blanket all of the veggie goodness and everything going on the table. So let me know what you think. Oh, yeah, very nice, very easy. So again, it's a foodie white. Yeah, I, easier, easier than that. I'd say that's a bit more interesting, but. And also if you have cheese at Christmas, like I'm a big cheese person as opposed to Christmas, like I, this goes really, really well with like a cheese board too, like where they kind of got aged cheeses and that kind of thing. I have to say, that for 7, yeah. 75 I think is an absolute steal. No, it's it's really so far really the ten quid bubbles and the seven seventy five are absolutely nailing it for me. Uh, anyway, we we've got three reds now. Yes, I'm back into reds. My yes, thrilled. Yes. I went off them yes. for a while. I also drink it much slower, which is good. Yeah. yeah, it's like a hug in the drink, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so what do we got? Tesco's first up. 
Yes, so we have, this is, actually we're going back to New Zealand. We're going to Marlborough, where again, you normally expect to find Sauvignon Blanc from Marlborough, but they also make amazing Pinot Noir. Mm. And I just smelled this and I was like, oh my goodness, this just like smells like coolie and dried strawberry. Mm. And um, then you taste it. Oh, There's like a little delicious. bit of wood smoke. Isn't it so easy yeah, to drink? Really so nice. This was like, that's me, my like, kind of red. That's I like really the party like red. Goes fantastic with like cocktail sausages, charcuterie mm, boards, mm. cheese boards. Easy on its own. I think that's a red for women as well. I mean, yeah. not that my husband wouldn't drink it, but it's really easy. 15 so pounds. Good. Tesco's, that's great. Right, yes. we've got a Chianti next. Yes. I feel like I'm, I'm get, being edged off the set here. <laughs> anyway. A bit like what I did for the New Zealand Chardonnay. I was like, let's go for something a bit classic. But, um, you know, if, if you do have people who prefer to drink more classic things at the Christmas dinner table. So I went for a Chianti Classico. Right. And, from, and, and what, what, what is, like, what's the characteristics of a Chianti? I remember serving it in Pizza Express. Uh, I know. I, when I, know. I worked there many years ago. So this is actually a more generous version um, because sometimes Chiantis, you often see them in pizzerias because they tend to be high in acid, high in tannins, and they go so well with tomato-based sauces like pizza, pasta dishes. But... Um, what I like about this one is it has a kind of classic red dark fruit, which you get in the Chianti, and like lovely acidity to go with cranberry sauce and whatever. But um, it's made by the Puccini family, who have been around since like, I think the 1860s making Chianti. So they're kind of like very much Chianti royalty in Tuscany. And they've teamed up with Waitrose to do a number one Chianti Classico. And this is from 2016. $12.99. And this, um, it has had like a little bit more oak than maybe people would have experienced from some Chiantis, but there I think that is what gives it kind of the mince pie spice and kind of gives it the Christmas factor. So you have the brightness which you want from a Chianti and a kind of little savory finish also. But because of that oak actually Ooh, that's that, very yeah. nice. Yeah. It's very nice. Oh I like that. Mm. Actually I like that more than the Pinot Noir I think. Last but not least. Yes yeah, so hope. this is more of the cuddly um, you know, I, I always try and go for like more cuddly wines. I like that bottle. Sorry to be superficial, but no, you know. No, no, absolutely. That um, is cool. This is, um, it's called Proyecto Garnachas, and that means Project Grenache. And that's because um, this is actually made by a man whose whole project was to basically save the Grenache grape in Spain because a lot of the vines have been dug up. And he's like, this grape is amazing. So this is a Grenache from Priorat. Um, Priorat um, is known for these very old vines of Grenache. So actually, the vines in here are over 60 years old. Why is that important? Well, it just basically means you're gonna get more intense flavors of kind of dark, dark, deep plants. That looks like a serious, serious, serious red. Yeah, and, and it is quite a brooding red. Like maybe if I said this, I would have decanted it maybe for half an hour or so, because I think then you can unlayer it, you know, um, a little bit more. But hopefully what you should get is, as well as the deep, deep, dark fruit, you do get these kind of dried herbs, you do get these cedary elements. And um, it does come from these slate soils. And when you have lots of different kind of earthy, savory I'm ingredients going in. yeah, going on at the Christmas table, something like this would be really fun. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. That would go well with roast beef, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. I think that this wine handles depth and boom with a lot of nuance too. So I, I like it. It's, it's a slow drinker as well. You can't yeah. drink that too quickly. No, no, no. That's definitely not a quaffing. No, it's not. <laughs> not that I would judge. No, but, uh, <laughs> no, but you know, I, yeah. Anyway, there's a place for it. Delicious. That's that's a really cozy, sit by the fire, take your time. Lovely. Lovely, Amelia. I love oh. that you do what you do. I love that <laughs> you're so glamorous and vivacious. And I love that you kind of de-stuffify, that's not even a word. This, I think it should be. This wine world and... Um, <laughs> Brilliant recommendations, as oh, always. no, it's so I good mean, to be back. It's lovely to have you. I mean, for me, it's Pinot Noir, Green of and, and, and I mean, these are all pretty, I mean, it's all good. It's all good. The bubbles are all good. I'm so glad. Thank it's you. wonderful to be back and lovely have a wonderful time. Christmas. Now, festive dressing can often be a challenge with so many different social occasions in a small time period. So today we thought we would provide you with a little bit of inspo for the season ahead. So first up, we're going to talk festive dressing. Party season, do you guys buy into party season? Like, do you buy sparkles? Do you buy glittery fun things at this time? I feel like, I think I don't, but then I get really swayed by mm. like a really jazzy pair of earrings mm. or like a sequin trouser or, I think- Yeah, you, the, well, you, you love sequin trousers Yeah, this year, I feel so. like they, they're just really good things to have like in your wardrobe for that time where, like I love a sparkly pant because you can be like cozy big jump on the top. Yeah. Mm. 
party downstairs. Like, yeah. Yeah, party downstairs. Actually, I'm <laughs> always party party trousers yet yeah, this year. Yeah, or like yeah. a really yeah. pair of earrings. Like you, you've got on. Yeah, and you're wearing just yeah. like you know a black roll neck. Yeah, Dressing. same with your ones. Yeah, yeah, I love just like a big earring with something quite simple. But I, I do buy into party dressing. I tell you for why because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the the rest of the time my autumn winter wardrobe is quite sort of subdued, quite pared back. So it's really nice to have that break in the middle of the season where it's like you can really go like quite extra yeah. and then because I feel like summer it's way easier to go for some fun things yeah. and in the winter it's a bit harder yeah so kind of nice to just go for it I think yeah. it's time of year yeah I also think uh, it, you kind of touched on this but you buy them once but you they do come every yeah, time it doesn't sure. really change there are no, no. party season trends yeah, really yeah. like it is always just fun you yeah. wear this sequin trousers yeah. for sequins a long time and velvet will always be a thing yeah, yeah. come this time of year. yeah so true um so what have you guys bought obviously we're talking party wear but also kind of Generally, what have you bought this season? We're kind of midway through winter. Are we, winter actually hasn't even officially started, but mm. we're kind of midway through this dark, gloomy season. So what have you bought so far, Lou? So one of the best things that I bought, um, one was a pair of kind of short Wellington boots, but they are mm. from Ganny. Nice. Um, they're kind of like that, like gum sole. Mm. And they, the best thing about them is that they are shearling lined. Oh, so I, I've got like a little pair of wellies, but my feet get so mm. cold on winter walks. So they're just like really nice throw on, like they've got a really chunky sole, super, super comfy. And this fleece lining, I like cannot describe, it's mm. amazing. They're about 200 pounds, um, but yeah, really worthy investment yeah. um, mm. they were amazing and then the other favorite thing i bought this season is a tracksuit i'm afraid to say oh. do you remember when early in the year we we're like we're done with that <laughs> i'm not buying another tracksuit yeah and then i was like oh, actually it's all i want to wear I anyway it's from american vintage yes. it is the softest thing i had to, sh yeah. to bring it in to show you guys how did you bring that in for us to feel no, I think I was wearing, <laughs> I I wearing, I was wearing it for something. Okay. Anyway, you, you both I think you were right. I had the pleasure of touching it. Mm. Yeah. That was it. Um, and it's amazing. Yeah, it's so soft. It is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know when someone's like, oh, it's so soft. And I was like, sure, it's just going to feel like any old tracksuit. But it really, really was, wasn't yeah. it? I, was like, I saw it on Lucy Williams and was like, where is that tracksuit from? A, the colour and the shape is amazing. Like, I need that in my mm. life. Yeah. And um, she said American Vintage. So I hopped oh. straight into the store. Ooh. American Vintage are expensive, but like, it's so, it's so comfortable. Mm. Like, everything is so comfy. But then, yeah. like, I've got some really good t-shirts from there as well. Um, it is good for those places. You've got a really good cardi from that. I yeah, do, yeah. yeah. It's really cozy yeah. and really good quality. Yeah. Mm. Um, Holly, what have you bought this season? I feel like I've really invested in my knitwear collection this season. I've like got a couple from me and M and a few from and other stories. I'd say those are like my two hero brands mm -hmm. for me personally. The me and M kind of roll neck one I've got with big cuffs, I've got in like a few different colors and it's just such a good mm. shape. And like, it's a little more expensive. And I've historically said like, oh, maybe don't, you don't need to invest in your knitwear, blah, blah, blah. but like, actually it's amazing. It like makes me feel so good. Even when I'm just wearing it with jeans yeah. or a pair of leathers, I don't know, it just feels, it feels exciting. Mm. And also and other stories, I've got a really good range. I bought that kind of striped, I know it's been the season of a stripe, we've kind of talked about a lot, but <laughs> all that a lot. And this, this one, from this one was some stories as well. But then my other top choice, I think has to be my, the row boots. I think I've worn yes. them to death and not, no, actually not. I'm not going to say to death. I've just worn them a lot and I've got my money's worth Don't and they go with everything. So yeah, really pleased I invested in those. I, I really laughed. Oh, so I'll take it to mind, but I was just going <laughs> to say, I really laughed in um, your behind the scenes with Georgie at Harvey Nichols when you were like, look, we agree on a pair of shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, oh my God, so special. Yeah. Um, what have I bought this season? I have bought a few pairs of Paris, Texas boots. I'm going to get to one um, in a minute. I've talked about them quite a lot, um, but those ones are not that comfortable. However, mm. I have a pair with a low kitten heel, which I, which I like the most buttery soft leather, and I've worn those to death. They've mm. been a really good purchase. I feel very grown up in their boots. I think it's yeah. a long heeled yeah. boot thing. Yeah. But I've really enjoyed those. Um, what else? Oh, and I've got a coat from Ray. Oh, so good. Which I didn't have like a like a lined, so kind of a weighty wool coat. Yeah. Mm. Um, and that has been, I have to say, I've worn it every day since I got it. Actually, mm. I think Ray stuff is so huge. oversized, yeah. like huge. Um, so I had to have quite a lot taken off the sleeves oh, and the bottom, you? but I'm really thrilled with it. You've already so it's really good, it's isn't so it? Good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, coat. So that's me. Um, should we talk about Christmas Day? Yeah. I think a question we get asked a lot is what to wear kind of for these big occasions. So We've got a rail here. What will you guys be wearing for Christmas Day? I'll come to Lou first because yours is first in the rail. Polly, if you don't okay. mind being our glamorous yes, assistant. I will. So I 
like to go quite twee on Christmas so Day. So sweet. Um, <laughs> I actually have, I've spoken about it so many times, I have a little velvet dress from Cos, which I got years and years and years ago, which I wear, oh, yes. I wear one pretty much every year. Yeah, you can sit down if you want. Can I sit down? Yeah, yeah. great, you can sit down. <laughs> so, um, I have gone for this blouse from Batsheva. Hang on, I should take the cardigan off it first to show you how sweet this is without. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> um, so really pretty blouse from oh, Bat Shaver. Oh, that's nice. Isn't so it lovely? It's got these gorgeous little pearl buttons. Oh, so like, so cool, really nice by mm. itself. But on Christmas Day, I think you want to be cosy. So I um, would add this lovely cardi. This is from Stories. So sweet. That's like the Suzanne little cuffs that we, yeah. actually it's nothing like them, but you know, in the same way that we appreciated their cuffs. Yeah. Lovely. I, yeah. I like. I love a, a knit that's got like a little bit of pretty yeah, yeah. touch Quite to different. it. And yeah, the buttons are gorgeous. The sleeves, mm. um, and it's kind of like a really, really soft pink. Mm, it's like yeah. an oyster pink. Yeah, isn't it? yeah really gorgeous. Um, soft. So yeah, that and that, and then with leather trousers, just to kind of toughen up a little bit. Yeah, uh, um, cool. Not toughen, but you know, it just kind of bit of an edge. Nice. Yeah. Then. Oh, so good. Obsessed with those These little velvet Mary Janes um, from. I think I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Le Beryl Mond. The Mont Mont Barrel. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and they dropped on matches yesterday and I wanted a pair of Velvet Mary Janes for so long. I tried them on yesterday and I messaged you both and was like, am I Alexa Chung yet? <laughs> um, but there's a just, red pair as well, which are also amazing. Yeah, there's oh, a Velvet, yeah. I think there's a navy, there's a green, there's loads of colours. Um, I just think that's actually a really good shoe for this time of yeah. year mm. when you don't want to wear heels. Yeah. Especially around the house. Really yeah, lovely. I have velvet flats. I talk about them all the time, but I they really come into their own. Yeah, so for sure. Yeah. And obviously, I showed my husband last night and he was like, oh, you look like a four-year-old. Um, <laughs> but they actually really elongate your legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really appreciate it. I feel them. like they're such a man repeller, but actually, they're really cool and really classic. Yeah. Yeah. Like, your husband's not going to get it, but exactly. they just no, don't exactly. understand. <laughs> then, just to finish it off, a big bow. That's so, so sweet. sweet. I think you should wear this outfit. It's yeah, so nice. I was really excited Love that. It. Thank um, you. Probably going to pass you back. Love that. So sweet. Um, Thank you so much. Polly, what is what are you going to be wearing this Christmas? Yours is a little bit more evening-y, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, but still quite relaxed, mm. I think. So I don't really love to dress up, up on Christmas Day. I prefer to wear something a bit more relaxed and a bit more elasticated mm -hmm. because I know historically, as I've grown up, it, like it's never been about dressing up. So it's only in like recent years that I've been kind of up for that. So I think I'm going to wear my sleeper pajama trousers, Fine. nice, which all important elasticated waist yeah. with a nice sort of cashmere roll neck um, tucked into them and an oversized blazer, which I guess is just quite me. Like it's not that much different to what I'd wear like mm -hmm. normally, um, but still comfortable. You can take that off if you want to just keep it a little bit more yeah. relaxed but if you're smart enough for lunch you can wear that and then I'm probably going to wear it with my Manolos just for a little subtle pop of colour and then just break it up again a little bit with some jazz earrings these are from John Lewis last year but are thought, they? yeah would you believe so fab good. so good I get asked about them all the time I'm like yeah, sorry they're last year from John Lewis so if they, to be fair they've got some seriously good sort of Christmassy bits yeah, yeah they, they do actually yeah. um, so Island yeah. does have some really really good earrings exceptional I feel like when you're wearing something like that you know if it's kind of black on top obviously the excitement mm. is the bottom half yeah mm. for sure you, when you're sat down you then want something on yeah, the top half so it's the same with a nip you've got like you know, a nice button yeah, or a collar agreed. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Actually, on Saturday night, I wore a black roll neck like that with these earrings, and that was a good... If You feel like, as you say, you feel like yourself, but yeah. with, like, a bit of fun. Yeah, fun. totally. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Great. So, yeah, excited to wear that. Yeah, that's a really... It's a good compromise of comfy and evening. Well done. I agree. Um, um, what about oh, yeah, yours? That. Well, my... Polly, I'm sorry if you don't mind passing no, me No, not at all. So, I also... I like to be comfortable, um, but I like to dress up a little bit. So, mine is... I mean, it's not the most... Fe God, that's heavy, that jumper. Yeah, it is, um, it? It's not the most festive of looks, but actually, I thought this was quite a sophisticated take on yes. kind of... Something to wear all day, but still be kind of elegant and mm. yeah, you, you know what I mean. So um, I've got this fab, I think it's real leather, this skirt, isn't it? This mm. fab skirt, um, like, cream is a bit different, but actually a black leather skirt is quite good. Enough. Yeah, it's, it's quite like a here. pinky oyster. It's it always is, yeah. got like, uh, an iridescent like, yeah, it does. sheen to it as well. Shimmy, shimminess to it. Um, and this incredible oversized Miss So Little. good. Oh, so, so a bit like you were saying, like you just want to be cosy yeah. as well as growing yeah. up and elegant. And then with my cream Paris Texas boots. Good and outfit. Yeah, Such just a bit of head to toe cream. Yeah, you know? I said before this, I was like, this is outside the box and I love it. Still feels appropriate, but it's not like predictable. I yeah. love it. Thanks so much. <laughs> I aim to please. So there we go. I have to give you that back to you because it's so heavy. Yeah, um, let's talk New Year's Eve quickly while we're here. What are you What are you doing for New Year's? I mean, obviously, we don't want to use the C word again, but we don't know where we'll be in a few weeks. But, no. but what are you thinking and what will you be wearing? 
I am thinking, I, I hate going out on New Year's Eve. Yeah. Um, mm. It's definitely staying, either it's an intimate dinner, par dinner party at home or just me and my husband. Um, so something cozy and warm, probably quite similar to, I think, to what I was wearing Christmas Day. Mm. I'd love to get some, you know, vel maybe ve loose velvet pants. I really you know, need some loose velvet trousers. Yeah. Do you know what? Somebody in the office was wearing the other day and I thought that was a really clever yeah. thing to buy. Mm. Just that and some cashmere and some earrings. Actually, I was going to show you these earrings oh, yes. um, from Completed Works. I love pearl earrings, but in, in a modern way. So something like these. <gasps> they are stunning. Oh. I they, hadn't seen the bit at the end. Aren't they Love amazing? Them. Yeah. Um, so something, yeah, like those with like, yeah, black cashmere and some velvet trousers. Great. Perfect. Yeah, Polly, really. what are your plans? Um, I don't really have any plans thus far. I mean, I always feel like it's quite last minute for me if anything does happen. But I think, I feel like this year it's just going to be in front of the TV with the takeaway. So if it's not something quite similar to what I wore on Christmas Day, it'll probably just be a really good matching tracksuit. I've got a nice kind of cashmere one from Warehouse and places, but it's so, so soft. Nice. Or I've got a tracksuit on the way from that brand, Life of Ease, which yes. you um, talked about the other yes. day. Yes, lovely Life of Ease. They've got really, really good matching. Like a bit, they're slightly more fitted than some of the really mm, oversized yeah. ones, so therefore they look a bit more polished. Yeah. And, I've yeah. got one and I really rate it. Yeah. I think if you're, you're going to go for like loungewear and tracksuits this time of year and you don't want to feel too like slobby, mm. Going matching yeah. or going knitted is a yeah. like great way to feel. Oh, oh have you gosh. guys ever considered a silky pajama set? I'm just gonna put it out there. <laughs> Sorry, what? Just, just this novel idea I had. <laughs> Always works in the same way. Oh, yeah. um, all right. Thanks both. Happy Christmas. Happy I don't Christmas. think we're gonna see each other again now. Oh, oh, so sad. I'm sure we'll, on, we'll be on the phone in five minutes. Yeah, I'm sure we will. Right. <laughs> um, all right, thank you so much, uh, both of you. I'm feeling quite organized now, but actually. Uh, right, next today, Adiola is going to show you how to perfect a glam makeup look to go with your new outfit. Uh, but first, Sarah Turner, head chef at Social Pantry, is back with her take on the perfect Brussels sprouts. <laughs> Hello, I'm Sarah and I'm head chef at Social Pantry and I'm here to show you the ultimate Christmas sides. Next up is Savoy cabbage, Brussels sprouts, caramelised apples and hazelnuts. much for watching i hope you enjoy your christmas lunches for more food inspo follow social pantry on instagram enjoy your christmas lunches hi everyone adiela boyega here beauty contributor for sheer Lux. 
and in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you a really beautiful glam look perfect for the festive season so step one to create a really beautiful look is obviously to start off with great skin so i'm going to go in with this radiance primer by nars which i absolutely love i'm actually going to pop it on the back of my hand but you can see it has this like pearlized sort of look to it and it's that peachy undertone i actually like to apply it with a brush because it means that i get a really beautiful application so it feels a little bit more sort of luxe the foundation that i'm going to be going for is this brand new one by renowned makeup artist Lisa Eldred who I absolutely love and this one's actually called Seamless Skin which is very apt because it really does give you beautiful skin like a finish but it just blends in so beautifully if you are going for parties or on Christmas Day you want something that you can whack on and not have to worry about this is definitely one of those foundations because it literally just goes on like a dream but you don't even feel like you're wearing it look at the difference that it makes it it's really lovely and even blends in beautifully but it's not too dissimilar to my own skin tone so next step after you've completed your base and it's looking very very flawless is to go in with a little bit of bronzer this one is one of my favorites it's actually very affordable it's the rimmel natural bronzer i absolutely love it my tip would be is to use a really lovely fluffy brush like this to apply and just take a small amount really make sure that you're taking off the excess on the back of your hand before you go straight in and applying that on the high points of the face such as your forehead, just under your cheekbones and under the jawline as well, and then taking it down onto the neck and chest area. It's so important. I actually like to take um, a nice fluffy brush and use that as my eyeshadow color as well. It looks really beautiful, very effortless and flawless because I don't want too much on the eye because the lips are gonna be the main attraction of this makeup look. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to define the eyes. I'm actually gonna be using this eyeshadow stick from V, which doubles up as an eyeliner. Don't worry about being perfect or neat. The main aim of the game is to make sure that you're getting the liner right in between the lashes. So running that along the lash line in back and forth motions making sure that you're going from the inner corner of the eye all the way to the outer corner. And it will look a little bit something like that. I'm gonna get a pencil brush. And it's very important that it is a pencil brush like this, because then what you can do is then start to blend it out with the brush. And the pencil brush will just give you that little bit more precision to ensure that you don't move the liner too much. And I'm always ensuring that I'm lifting on the outer corner of the eye, so you get this nice wing. I've done it on the other side as well. And I love lashes, and that's because, as you can see, I have nothing in that department when it comes to lashes. First thing is to go for something that's quite natural looking, um, but also has a very thin band. So I'm gonna be using these. These are some naked lashes from Ardell. Make sure that you've got a really good glue. This one is by Swede, a really lovely lash brand that I love. I've measured my lashes and just snipped the outer corner very lightly just to ensure that they're not too long, which is very important. I pop the glue on and then I leave it to dry for about 30 seconds. That way the glue's quite tacky and it's not too wet because if it's too wet, it won't stick on. And then I always have a compact mirror to hand so I can hold it and then look down. That's very important. You don't want to be looking straight ahead when you're applying your lashes. Actually looking down makes it so much more easier. So you tilt your head back, you look down into the compact and then just place the lashes really close the lash line I always kind of aim for the center of my lash like you can see there to get your fingers or if you want to you can use tweezers and then just push the lash in the inner corner and then on the outer corner kind of tucking them in and there you have it so you've got your lash applied and I love this lash because it's not too much not too heavy um, it doesn't distract from any of the other makeup, it just gives you a little bit of something, which I think is very important. I actually like to use a bit of mascara just to kind of mesh my lashes with the falsies. Um, and again, just to add a bit more depth and definition, this one is the Bobbi Brown Smoky Eye Mascara, which I absolutely love. So I'm going to pop that through my lash very gently and just pushing that through. Mainly at the base of my lash line, I'm not really focusing on getting the ends or the sort of tips of my lashes and you can also use the end of your wand or the tip of the wand just to make sure that you've got every single lash like that so you can see that there you get a really nice 
application and then if you want to you can also do the bottom of your lashes as well which i really like to do because it makes my eyes look a little bit more open and to finish off the look on the face i'm gonna add a bit of highlighter because having a bit of a glow is always a good idea in my opinion so i'm gonna go in with this really beautiful palette from hourglass which is just so stunning i mean if i just swatch that alone i mean look at that guys so it's going to take a few of the colors and i'm just going to pop that just on my cheekbones it just gives the most incredible radiance of the skin and imagine being on the dance floor and having that really lovely glow it's just so beautiful and it doesn't create texture it just looks very natural and that's what i'm always looking for when i'm looking for a highlighter and then we're going to finish off with the final step which is the beautiful bold red lip who knew that la perla who do the most incredible lingerie now does beauty this is one of their sort of velvet sort of silk lipsticks which i'm excited to try and i'm always going to go in with a lip liner first which is so important um i tend to do a lip liner but fill in the whole of my lip with the lip liner these are great these are the perma gel pencils from pat mcgrath they're a gel base so they're very very long lasting and look how creamy it is it literally just glides on so effortlessly i kind of do the perimeter of my lip or the outer perimeter first and then i fill it in and that just gives a really beautiful base and then just go straight in with your lipstick And honestly guys the texture of this lipstick is divine it's like a creamy silk formula already i mean look at that and it's a really beautiful color that would work on everyone's skin tone it's that really beautiful sort of blue tone red that also makes your teeth look super super white love that and once you've got your finished look you're happy with everything it's time to set the finishing touches with a little bit of face mist this is actually a new range by Nikki Tutorial, it's called Nimia and it's a fantastic spray. It's called Set It and Forget It, which is exactly what you want to do with your makeup, especially on Christmas Day. You don't want to be worrying about how you look. So it's a lovely, lovely spray. It smells amazing. Let that settle for a little bit. It will sit on the skin. Well, I hope that you guys have enjoyed my step-by-step -step tutorial on this beautiful makeup look. I'm absolutely obsessed. It's definitely the makeup look I'm gonna be wearing on Christmas day. And um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know which one was your favorite step and if you're gonna be incorporating any of my tips into your makeup routine for this festive season. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Thanks, Adiola. You make it look so easy as always and well done, Sarah. If anything was going to make me feel differently about the Brussels sprout, then that was probably it. Now, as fun as it is to dress up at this time of year, it is also when loungewear comes into its own. The ultra stylish Hannah Lewis has joined forces with off-duty named to know Pangaea. So here is her edit of the coolest tracksuits available now. <laughs> Best till last. Here is Laura Black, the queen of the product edit, with her selection of the best Christmas gifts this season. Pens at the ready. Hi, I'm Laura Black, and these are the gifts I'm buying this Christmas. First up are these lovely little napkin bows velvet napkin bows from Mrs. Alice, which I just think are a really sweet gift for a girlfriend or for a host. They're really reasonable and are just gonna up anybody's tablescape, so I think they're a great gift. 
Next up are these really sweet little sheepskin sliders for my little girl. She's seven now and I thought she needed something a little bit more grown up than an average slipper. And I thought these with chunky grey socks were really cute. For any child, we actually have one already, so this is more for godchildren. But these are these light up bath disco balls that just make bath time so fun. I think they're about 14 pounds and no child is not gonna love this. It's amazing. Next up in my family, we do Secret Santa where we have a slightly bigger budget. And this year I have a tricky brother-in-law who has everything. So I've gone for this Eto wine decanter, which first of all, just looks gorgeous. You decant the bottle of wine in and then it's got a suction. So it takes out all the air. So you just keep it in your fridge. And I think, yeah, if you've got a, a boozy wine lover, then this is a great one for them. My husband loves a gilet and surplus do them so well. They're a really good price. It's wool, it's got a really cool neckline. These are, these are having a bit of a moment and will go down well with any man in your life. Next up is this amazing nighty from If Only If. It's their new Natasha, which is made in the most amazing cotton boil. It is so soft. I love receiving nightwear for Christmas, and I mean, this is the absolute ultimate. Next up, these are a little bit random, but I have lots of sisters, and they all stayed recently, and we felt a bit jaded the next morning, and we spent hours rolling these cryotherapy tools over our face, and everyone left saying they wanted some for Christmas. So for, I think they're about 55 pounds, these are an absolute win for the girls. Offers secret Santas are always so tricky, but I think these water bottles are an absolute win. They're 14 pounds, two liters. Look around the Shillux offices, everyone has them. So it's definitely a crowd pleaser and an easy one for him or for her. I hope you found that useful and have a very Merry Christmas. So that's it for today and for this year. Thank you so much to Amelia, Sarah, Adiola, Hannah, and of course, Polly, Lou, and Laura. What a show and what a year it has been. Thank you so much for watching with us. We couldn't possibly do it without you. So from everyone here at Sheer Lux, we hope you have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We cannot wait to be back in 2022. Bye-bye.